Hi there, my name is Michael and this is Michael Helwig Interiors. If you're a returning guest, welcome back. I'm so excited to hang out with you a little while again today. And if you're brand new to my station, I'm a design pro who talks primarily about small homes, challenging spaces and awkward layouts. So if you have any issues like that uh, in your home, you're in the right place because I got all kinds of good stuff to talk about coming up in future videos. If you wanna read about things, I do have a wonderful blog over on michaelhelwiginteriors.com where you can read about rugs and art and furniture and all kinds of paint colors, wallpaper, anything that you can think of for small spaces or awkward little corners and houses and things like that over on my blog. And that's been going on since 2017. So there's all kinds of great stuff over there to refer to. Uh, today, I'm going to talk primarily about uh, the products and purposes for awkward empty spaces in small rooms. So what we're going to talk about today is how to how to how to handle those challenges in small rooms when you have an empty space or a, a weird corner that isn't big enough for a chair or isn't big enough for another piece of furniture. What do you do with those spaces? Are you hung up on something like that? Because you know, I've experienced a couple of places in my house that I've been hung up on and we'll talk about that in a second. Now, the first thing I want to talk about uh, with with regards to small spaces and things that are in awkward corners is going to be maybe putting an etagere in the corner. So if you look over my corner, over my shoulder over here, you're going to see that I have an etagere in the corner and it's right, uh, right inside my entryway. It has nothing to do with anything <clears throat> going on in my entryway. It's just a spot for display and a spot for, you know, putting collections of different little things, little knickknacks and stuff like that that I have. But it was a space that I really didn't have any other use for. So having an etagere over there is great. A couple of things about etagers that I think are important to kind of talk about is that they're not bookshelves. Bookshelves tend to be kind of closed off. They're, they're self-contained and you can load them up with books and all kinds of stuff. It's not a cabinet that has doors on it. So an etagere is basically an open thing that you can see through to the wall and it just gives you an open airy kind of um, aesthetic to, to a small space. Having something that has open shelves like that on it where you can see all the way through it and around it is good for small spaces because a closed up thing is going to make the space feel a lot smaller. Having something a little bit open where you can see the wall behind it gives you the opportunity to display a few things not loaded up with a thousand books because that's not really what the use of it is for. And it also gives you a spot to, uh, to kind of put your different knickknacks and stuff like that on there without overwhelming the space. So my first suggestion for a small awkward corner or a small space in a room where you can't fit a chair or something else is to put an etagere there. I'll be back with my next suggestion for you in a second. Next up, I'm going to talk about nooks. So if you have a nook or a niche or something like that in a, in a different space, uh, those can be a little bit more challenging to decorate as well. What I think that you should do with something like that, and this is something that has walls on both sides and it kind of bumps into the space. So you kind of have like a bump in to a room uh, is to put in a custom built in cabinet in that. I think that's a great use of that space. So something that maybe has like a closed cabinets on the bottom, floating shelves on the top that are maybe open, maybe some glass shelves that are going to go above that. That kind of gives you a little bit of, you know, transparency and a little bit of airiness in the space as well. Um, if you love wine, here's a good example. If you are a wine drinker, maybe you have a wine cabinet that's built into the niche, the niche or the nook uh, for, for some use for wine and things like that. You can have the shelves displaying the paraphernalia that you have for the wine, wine glasses, decanters, openers, all kinds of things can go on, like maybe a countertop that's just above the closed cabinetry underneath. But I think something like that in a built-in, bumped-in nook or niche inside of a wall is going to be a great use of that space. So plants are a great thing to put into a awkward corner or a space in the room that you might not have a room for uh, different pieces of furniture in. So I'm not really concerned about whether the, the plants are real or fake. There are some really great, um, you know, fake plants on the market, so you can find those. And I'll, I'll insert a few pictures of what I'm talking about, what are, what are realistic looking plants for a space like that. So if you don't have a green thumb, um, one, well, for example, one of my favorite plants is 
pandoradas or fiddle leaf figs. I love them. I think they're beautiful. I think they have a lot of uh, wonderful presence. They, they fill up the space organically. They look great. They're, they're beautiful looking plants, you know, bright green leaves that are big and they have height and all kinds of things. So they've got a lot of things going for them, but they're also extremely touchy and very difficult to keep alive. Uh, so if you're not really interested in trying to keep one of these fiddle leaf figs alive, then get a fake plant. I mean, who's who's really going to know? I mean, it's not like people are going to be going up and touching the plants. If they are, maybe you shouldn't be inviting them to the house. That's just what I'm saying. But, you know, something that has a lot of presence to it, something that's going to give you some height, something that's going to give you some texture, some natural element into the space, like a fiddle leaf fig, real or fake, depending on what your, your comfort level is with them, is a great option for doing something in a space that is awkward, that doesn't have a lot of room for a chair or some other piece of furniture, because it's gonna give you some impact and it's gonna give you a little bit more of a focal point in the space too, and that's always good. Next up, I'm gonna talk about statement lamps. Okay, so statement lamps are great because they are things that are a little bit out of the ordinary. So something that isn't just like a regular run-of-the-mill floor lamp, for example, that you can go pick up at Ikea or another department store, maybe something that is a little bit more special. So if you have a super modern room, for example, maybe you have a really beautiful, modern, sculptural looking lamp that can go into a space next to the couch that you don't have another room for a table for, you know, like if, you're, if, you're, if your couch is, is super wide and there's not a, a space for an end table, then maybe a big statement lamp that can go right there would be something that would be interesting for that spot. Um, it could be something like a Tiffany style lamp if you're more arts and craft or traditional, something like that that has a beautiful filigree and some, some stained glass and things like that on it, I think would be great. Um, what about if you're you know, a farmhouse? Maybe you do something that is constructed from something that would be seen on a farm, you know, maybe something that has a little bit of character that may be a DIY project or something. Just something fun that's going to give you a little bit of an interesting oomph in the space, okay? So we're talking about something that's going to give you a focal point and a little bit more light in the space, which is always important, but it's also going to give you something really pretty and beautiful to look at that is specific to maybe the style of your room or an eclectic style if you're like mixing different styles and things like that, that's going to speak directly to you and what your aesthetic is. So think about something like that, a big statement lamp that has some presence and some excitement, and that would be a great thing to put into a corner or an awkward empty space in a room as well. So as the weather starts to change now here in the fall, it's getting a little bit chillier at night. So we're all looking for maybe a couple of blankets to cover up with. So another suggestion that I have for a small space that has an awkward corner that's empty or even a corner or a, a spot in the room that's empty is maybe put a blanket ladder in the room. That's something that you can display some really nice blankets on and that you can grab them when you're chilly, curl up on the couch, curl up on the bed, curl up in the office even, you know, put, put them across your lap in the office when you're working. If you've got an office that has a, a blank spot in it too, a blanket ladder might be a great thing to put on the wall that's going to give you a little bit of texture and some usability. It's going to give you some height in the space. It's going to give you some display for those blankets. And it's also going to give you functionality that you're going to really want in the space as well. So a blanket ladder is another suggestion for a small, awkward and empty space. How about a decorative screen? Have you uh, ever seen those? I think those are pretty in interesting and that might be a really great way to outfit an awkward corner or an empty space in the room. So say, for example, you have a living room and you need a office space in the living room, or you want something that is going to cover up a little bit of clutter in a corner in a living room or a bedroom or an office or, a, you know, anywhere else in the, in the house that you might have a spot like that. Uh, decorative screens are great because they add some visual texture. You know, they can be carved screens, they can be silk screens, they can be specific to a decorative style. Um, the nice thing about them is that they will be able to be put up and you can put things behind them like that office space or whatever. And you can also um, hide you know, a couple of sins here and there in the room as well. So if you got a little bit of clutter, then that's great for that kind of stuff. It also, of course, is meant for privacy and things like that too. So back in the day, you would put them up in like a boudoir and you could change behind them and things like that. So they're great for things like that as well, but they're also really wonderful for corners in a room where you don't have a lot going on and you want some interest uh, some height and some maybe visual texture or some some uh, color and in, in different things like that in the space too. So that's another idea for a screen in a small corner or an awkward space in a small room as well. 
Now I'm going to talk about purposes for small awkward spaces in um, you know in rooms. And basically what I'm talking about with this is so we talked about kind of products to put into these awkward corners in small spaces that are empty. Let's talk about like making them purposeful. So what about having a meditation space? in a small awkward space meditation you know self-care is really important it's important for all of us these days we all have lots of stress and different things going on in our life so why not have a spot for like some self-care you know a meditation space is great in my office i have a small meditation bench that goes underneath my uh my corner etagere that's in my office it's got a heater, uh, like a, a radiator heater with a cover on it in the corner. There's a lamp on top of that. There's really not anything I can do with that corner of my office. So I decided, you know, I put my, my shelving and stuff like that right behind my desk. And in the lower corner by my radiator, that's where I keep my meditation bench on the last um, on the last shelf of my entry chair. So I just pull it out and I can kneel on it and do my meditation in the morning or the afternoon or wherever I feel like I need a little bit of a, you know, kind of recentering and things like that with my life. So having something that's purposeful like that in a corner is just as important as having a product in a corner like that. So we're going to talk about a couple more too in a second. Another great place to think about for a purposeful thing in a space is a pet crate. Um, I have a dog, and so when I'm not at the house, she goes into her little crate, and it's just a wire crate. So I've always, more recently, I've been thinking about kind of upgrading to something a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Now I've been on the hunt for a couple of things, and I've come across a few things that I think are really interesting. So there's a lot of different uh, pet crates that are, you know, they're, they're end tables as well as a pet crate. So they're kind of dual function. Multi-function is great. That's always one of the things that I talk about in small spaces whether it's a awkward space or a small space, having things that have a couple of different functions to them is always going to be important. So, you know, I've saw this dog crate that has, it's like an end table for the corner of the sofa or next to a chair, and you can have your dog in it when you're not home, and you can put a lamp on it and some display stuff on top of it because it has a solid top to it, and it's all open with decorative kind of like a, a decorative crate so it's not like a wire crate it matches everything is matched to the wood that's on the piece itself and it's just all very cohesive and it looks really nice so something like that is important too that's also a very purposeful thing in a space as well another great thing to put in one of those bump ins those alcoves or those niches nooks or whatever you want to call them that have walls on you know three sides and then it's open um, but there's not anything that you can put into it. Maybe it isn't big enough to put in a shelf that you want to put in that you buy off of, you know, off of the store or a cabinet that you buy might be a little bit too big or a dresser in a bedroom. So something like that, and especially in a bedroom, um, something like that would be great for another built in thing too. And the purpose of the built in thing that I'm going to talk about now is maybe a makeup vanity. So if you have a spot like that in your bedroom where you, it's kind of nooked out, I've got a spot behind my door in my bedroom that kind of butts up against where the closet is, that is a kind of like a nook just like that, would be a great place to put something like a makeup vanity or a desk or something like that. You can have shelves above it to kind of display your products. You can have like maybe a desktop that you build that you build specifically for the space that might have a drawer in it or some storage underneath it. Uh, run a cord down below it. If you have a plug on the wall inside of there, it might be great for like a lamp or a lighted mirror to do your makeup and stuff on. But that might be something really great to think about too for a nook or a niche like that in the bedroom. Well, that's going to do it for this particular video, and that is 10 things for awkward spaces that you don't know what to do with, or awkward corners that you don't know what to do with in your room. And if you enjoyed the video, I'd love it if you give it a thumbs up and give me a like. Um, also, if you're, if you're interested, I'd love for you to subscribe so that you'll know when I release a video, which is on Sundays, Sunday mornings, I release my videos. Um, so you'll know every week you'll get a, a notification to check your check your YouTube and, and to see me again for what I'm talking about this week. Um, if you'd also like to go over to Michael Helwig Interiors, if you need a jump start on any kind of a project, I've got a great resource for you right there on my homepage. It's called The Secrets That Only Designers Know to Make Your Space Rock, and it's totally free. There's 11 tips and different strategies in that guide for you to start a makeover or to continue along with the project that you 
are maybe stuck on, uh, it's a great resource for, for people that are doing things like that. So until next week, it's so great that, uh, you know, we had this time to talk and I really love to see you again next week. So come back again and see me. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.